Hello students and welcome to this video for Excel chapter one hands-on exercise number two. Um, what I'm going to be getting into the habit to here uh, looks like at least with the hands-on exercises is briefly going through just very quickly um, the couple of pages before the exercise because this is where you get the information um, this is kind of the meat and the potatoes so to speak of the meal of the knowledge you need to have in order to successfully complete the hands-on exercise so um, I'm actually on page 417 in your textbook and we're gonna briefly go through it it's gonna be very fast before we get to the exercise so this is gonna help you so you already know for um, we've used functions um, and we're talking about here right at the very top of the page we see a formula combined cell references arithmetic operations values and or functions used in a calculation okay so formulas are using functions values arithmetic operations and cell references and so we're going to be creating formulas today and these formulas help you to analyze to look at how results will change as you put in different data so Excel is all about using data and understanding it properly so you're going to be using cell references instead of values. So a lot of the times here we've been typing in things like 10 and then you know you put the number 10 over here and let's say put 20 here and then I can insert a function right here and I'm just going to tell it to do sum and I'll click OK and then it's going to calculate A1 and 2 like that. Now I'm using numbers here but you notice it's using A1 and 2. That's what's referred to as a cell reference. It's referring to a specific cell. And so you're going to be using that in formulas today um, that we have. Okay. Um, now also you can see here order of operations. We talked about that a little while ago. Um, with your formulas it has an order of operations. It's going to do certain steps first. And you may have heard the thing um, kind of the uh, memory device of please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So you've got parentheses, you've got exponentiation, you've got multiplication or division, and then finally addition or subtraction. So this is on page 418, um, and it shows the order there for it. So you got to keep that in mind when we do formulas, and it's going to talk about that in the exercise. Then we also have semi selection. So there's multiple ways to select a cell um, here in it. So it says here on page 419 under use semi selection to create a formula to decrease typing time and ensure accuracy use semi selection a process of selecting a cell or range of cells for entering cell references as you create formulas semi selection is often called pointing because you use the pointers to select cells as you build the formula so um, some people like this method better I honestly like this method better because it's true you don't have to type with it and also um, you I uh, can just click. So when I just type it in, I click up here and I have to put in equal sum and I have to type in the f one cell and I type in the other one and I have to put it in like that. And it does add it. But what I can do is I'm going to get rid of this formula and I can click here. I can put equals sum and I type that in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my first number and you see how it puts the reference there. And then I can put even a comma here, or you saw I did a colon earlier, and then I click on my other one, and then I do a closing parentheses and push enter. And it does it that way. So that's called semi selection. That's what we're talking about when we refer to it. Now you can copy formulas um, here, and the way that they do it, um, or show how to do it, is you click the cell with the content you want to copy. So this one has my formula. I put in the sum function and created that formula. And then it says point to the fill handle right here in the bottom right corner until the pointer changes to a thin black plus sign you can see it and of course you can drag the fill handle to copy the formula and you can see it changes as it goes so right here this one is adding a1 and a2 this one is adding a2 and a3 do you see how it changed for each cell that it moved down it's adding the two above it not necessarily a1 and a2 added forever together over and over and over Okay. Now you can display cell formulas um, with by pushing the button. So if you hold down the control button and then push the accent grave accent key, which is over right above the tab button in near number one, it's going to show all your formulas. So it's kind of a formula display mode. So as opposed to showing the numbers, and I can hold down control, push that grave accent button again, and it changes back. So again, it's right under the escape key 
um, that's where it is. So, all right, now we went briefly through that material. So let's get started here. We're on page 422, hands-on exercise um, number two of chapter one. So in step A, it's telling us right away to open up that file we were working on last time. So I'm going to do that. Let's see here. I'm going to go to browse and of course go to my folder where I saved it. You're going to your flash drive and we're open up this one right here. Except this time what we're going to do is we're going to save it, of course, changing that name on it. So I'm going to click save as, I'm going to choose browse and it says we're changing it from H1 to H2. It's that change right there. So H1 to H2. I'm going to push the enter button, save it. I already have a copy of this file. I'm replacing it. That's why it said that. All right, now we're into step B. Step B. So we're using our mathematical operation formulas today. It says click cell E5. So row 5, column E right here. So under retail price. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. Try to make this as easy as possible for you to see it. And then it says type equals C5 so I'm actually gonna click on C5 so you can see semi selection happening here and then it says put the little um, asterisk symbol that's shift and 8 and I do an open parenthesis I type 1 plus and then I'm going to click on D5 and your formula and then do a closing parenthesis so your formula should look something like this right here and I did that using semi-selection. Now you'll notice um, they color coded to make it easier for you. So C5 is blue and D5 is red. So Excel tries to make it easy for you to tell which ones you've used apart. All right, then I'm going to go and click the Enter button up here. So you can see here's my formula bar. Here's the Enter button right here. Click that, which is basically just putting the formula in. So it, you can see it shows a value of 600, and that is correct. And of course, percentage of sale is 0.15 there as well. All right, now step E, it says position the pointer on the cell E5 handle. So this is cell E5 where 600 is. I move it down here to make it that little black plus sign. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag, gonna, oh, excuse me, not drag it. Um, it says once it changes, double click the fill handle. And you can see instead of having to drag it, it just went and filled in all the active cells. So cells that had stuff typed in in the other columns. Then it says step F, click cell E6. So cell E6 is right here. So the cell contained the first copy one. And look at the formula bar. And of course it says, and then save your workbook. So you can see how it changed. This one is D5, or this one is D6. It changed it for us, which is great. Microsoft Office is all about saving time for you, the consumer of the products. All right, now um, we finished with page 422. We're on page 423, about to go to page 424. So step two, use semi-selection and apply the order of operations to create a formula. So we're using semi-selection, which I did that a little bit anyways, and we're using our order of operations. It says click cell G5. So right under sale price, you can see column G, row 5, so cell G5. And we're going to type in, it says equals, and then click the cell E5. So that's a 600. I clicked E5. And then it says type the asterisk, and then click cell F5. So it looks like this right now. Notice the color coding, coding there. And it says to hold down Control and push Enter. Remember, when you hold down Control and push Enter, it keeps the current cell the active one. So we just use semi-selection to do that. Then it says click cell G5, which we're already on cell G5. And then it says um, type in the following. So equals E5 minus opening parentheses E5 multiplied by F5 closing parentheses. So it looks like that. And it says, although the parentheses are not needed because the multiplication occurs before the subtraction, it may be helpful to add parentheses and make the formula easier to interpret. So sometimes we add the parentheses to make it easier. So we know, um, okay, 
This is going to be multiplied first, and then, of course, you're going to minus from E5 whatever this equals to. All right, then it says um, push enter. It changes it to 510. You can see that. And then it says double click the cell G5 fill handle. So I click on the cell. There's the fill handle. I'm going to double click again and copy the formula down to column G. Then it says step E, click cell G6. So G6, that's the 640.78. And view the formula bar. And the idea is they're having you view it because you can see it went and took the information we had and it adjusted accordingly to based on where the cell is. Okay, so step three, we're going to use cell references in a formula and apply the order of operations. All right, step A, this is the top of page 425, says click the cell H5. So right here, column H, row 5, here's our profit margin, and this is the cell where you enter, you will enter the formula to calculate the profit margin, and we're going to type this in. So equals, and it says opening parenthesis G5 minus C5, closing parenthesis slash, and then we got to type in one more thing, G5. Five. You can see the color coding going on here. We're doing two. We, lately, we've been adding or multiplying two cells right next to each other. You can see they're farther away now. So we type that in, and then it says hold down control and push enter. And of course, to put our information here, 0.215686 is correct. And then what we're going to do is it says double click that fill handle for this cell. So H5, we double click it. And of course, it says click H6 and see the change that is there. So each time it's been changing it for us. All right, step four. We're going through this very quickly. We're actually almost done here. We're on the last step. Uh, we're going to display the cell formulas. So what we're going to do is let's go to um, step A here. It says click cell C5. C5. So right here is row, uh, excuse me, column C, row five, and type four five. Oh, excuse me, four seven five point five. So 475.5, and then press Enter. And now it says click um, in cell D6, which we're going to click over here, D6. So we were in cell C5. Now we're in cell D6. And it says type 0.755, push Enter. Now you notice I didn't have to type the 0 before the decimal. Um, I can just put in the decimal, and when I push Enter, it adds it in. So we just did that for D6. Then it says go to cell F7. So here's column F, row 7. And you can always check by how it's highlighted here. And we're going to type in, it says 0 0.05. And then hold down Control and push Enter. And you noticed, um, hopefully, as we've changed it each time, it's been changing some of the other formulas. It's not like Word where we have to click on it and tell it to update. It just does it for us. Then it says, um, of course, I held down Control and pushed Enter, so that way F7 stays the active cell. Then it says press Control and the grave accent mark. So remember, that's right under your um, Escape button. You notice how it spreads it out like this, and you can see all my formulas down here. So I kind of have to move my screen. I could zoom out, um, but I'm not going to do that for the sake of you being able to see this. Um, and we're just looking at it quick. And then we hold down Control, push the grave accent mark again to put it back to normal view. And then you're going to save it. And that's the end of the exercise. So you need to turn in for this exercise, Excel Chapter 1, hands-on exercise number 2 markup. Um, and that is how you complete this exercise.